My name is Michelle Clark, and I am a member of the U.S. Women Collaboration, Cuba Collaboration. I am a member of the steering committee, and um, a little about myself. I'm born and raised in Seattle, went to school in D.C. and Chicago, came back to Seattle, always come back to Seattle, so my family is, they're very important. Um, I, uh, political science junkie, so degree in political science, all sorts of things. Got the opportunity to go to Cuba two years ago now with a friend of mine, Cindy Domingo, invited me to go on a trip to study women and equity and social justice and women's reproductive rights in Cuba. How can you not go, right? So I went. Um, when I was there, someone asked me when I came back, what are the three things that I liked the most or what impressed me most about Cuba. And so what I like to say is one, sense of community in Cuba. So I'm not sure if it's a function of the island is small, I think it's that and I think it, it's a function of the embargo, but there is a sense that I am a Cuban, I'm a person, but I belong to part of something greater than myself that I found very comforting, very warm, very family-like. Um, I also am very impressed with the people that, when I met in Cuba, have a sense of where they sit in history. The knowledge of their history is astounding. Unfortunately, like tons of us don't know who the Vice President of the United States is, let alone when the United States was founded, who came and when, who did what, how Native Americans were treated, all of those sorts of things. In Cuba, the amount of people that you just meet on the street who understand their place in time. Cuban time, the world time, all of that is just amazing to me. And then I think one of the third things that impressed me was the way the country coalesced around the five heroes. I can't think of anything that would happen in the United States that would bring us all together that way. Try to think of the Twin Towers, didn't happen. In the Seattle area, you try to think of maybe those four police officers that were shot in Lakewood, we don't even know their names. But in Cuba, the five heroes, what they did, why they did it, when they did it, who their family members are, all of that goes together. And everyone knows who they are, why they fought for Cuba, why they're being unjustly imprisoned, and why it's important to bring them back home. That, to me, was absolutely amazing. And frankly, awe-inspiring. Um, so, they want me to talk now about why I'm in the collaboration. As part of going to Cuba, unfortunately, we as United States citizens simply can't travel there freely. So we get a license, the collaboration gets a license to go to Cuba. You have to submit your resume and apply. Well, as part of getting the opportunity to go to Cuba, which most Americans aren't granted that opportunity, you agree to give one year of service towards the collaboration. What that means is that you agree to come back to your community and teach other women, other community members, your family, whoever, about Cuba, about what you learned in Cuba. So for me, I gotta go to Cuba, I have to live up to my end of the bargain. That means that I'm going to work for at least a year to teach other people about what I learned. So it's an ongoing process. Every day you learn a little more, makes you think, makes you question ideas you had, things you took for granted. Some things you might come out believing more, some things you won't believe at all, but, uh, you can't go through life without questioning, so I think that going to Cuba and belonging to the collaboration help you to become a better person in general, help me to become a better woman. I went to Cuba, so I've been twice now. I went last year, I went two years ago, then last year I worked with the collaboration, we did some tours to bring some Cuban women to the United States to help teach American women about the everyday lives of Cuban women. And You know, you can't understand by reading a book or other things, what people go through. The only way you truly can do that is either to walk in their shoes, which like I said, we can't do, 
or to meet other women and talk to them. So uh, bringing Cuban women here, talking to women here about what Cuban women do, I think is very important. Uh, additionally, we had a speaking tour of a woman named Norma Guiard. She came with a fantastic movie, Maestro, which detailed the 1961 literacy campaign in Cuba. Cuba is one of the few countries in the world who has constantly since 1962 been uh, identified by UNESCO as eradicating illiteracy. Uh, the empowerment that comes from reading is amazing. So to listen to other women talk about that. I used to be a tutor. I used to tutor people in reading. So um, I know how important it is either for kids or for illiterate adults to just see what happens when you start to read. So um, it was a privilege to work to bring a movie like that to show other people that there is another way to learn how to read. Not everybody learns the same way, so it's important. And, and the literacy campaign also shows that what a group of people can do when they put their minds to it. Small things can be accomplished relatively easily. Simply deciding to eradicate illiteracy can be done in a year in a small country so it can be done in the United States in four or five. I don't think that that's too much to ask. I think that we don't want to put the time into it. I would hope that some of my work with the U.S. Women in Cuba collaboration and bringing the film Maestro to the United States would help people in the United States realize that while I can't solve literacy in New York when I'm in Chicago, I can solve it on the south side of Chicago when I'm there. And that's how change comes about. We, this year, 2011, for the U.S. Women in Cuba collaboration, have done amazing things. When we went on a, another delegation to Cuba to, once again, broaden our knowledge, but we also did some things that I never thought I would be invited to do. In the past two months, I've gone to two international conferences on uh, Cuba solidarity, one in Mexico, where I would say that the thing that I probably learned the most was about the uh, issues that are happening in other parts of the world. So I learned things about Mexico that I never knew. I've been to Mexico multiple times. I never knew. I never knew that electricians there were locked out, that they were privatizing the government, I, or privatizing industry. I never knew that their water supply was in such, such dire straits that little boys who jump into the water are dead in a matter of days in some rivers. That I never knew. Uh, as a member of, as a citizen of the world, I don't know how you can learn things like that and not take action. To the fourth uh, CHE conference, I don't know its real name, and we were there and we presented on the film Maestro and we also talked about who we are and what we do for the collaboration. It was a great experience. We got to meet some people in Vancouver who are doing great work. I think that we have broadened the collaborations network, met some young men and women who I think will help us in the work that we do. If nothing else, I think that we will be able to send more humanitarian aid to Cuba more regularly because the people in Canada can travel there more frequently. So, um, I would say that I have encouraged women that I meet that I think would be open-minded to joining the to joining the collaboration, to doing the work for a year, and to traveling to Cuba to get involved with us to see what we're about. I know that making a year-long commitment might be too much, but then maybe what you want to do is you want to check out our website. You want to see some of the readings that we have. If you live in a city like Seattle or Maybe I think we're going to start an organizing committee in D.C. Maybe you want to check out what we're doing there, see if this is something that you would be interested in. We currently have study groups, so uh, we get together so that people like me who are just all junkies on political science can learn more about other uh, societies, take it away from strictly textbook, and read about what's really happening on the ground. So I invite you to come and uh, check us out, see what we're doing. You can like us on Facebook, U.S. Women in Cuba Collaboration, or you can visit us on our website, www.uswomenincuba.org. Thank you.